day week, which was like hell on earth. I don't even know where to start, you know. I guess I was told, you know, when I was in hospital that if I did everything right, if I if I stuck to my recovery plan, you know, if I if I kept my shit together, if I took my medication, if I did things that made me happy, if I if I stuck to the plan, things would get better. And I mean the truth is they've gotten worse. I used to think that life and you know, your mind, we're on the same path, but you can be doing really well with your illness and your whole life can be falling apart and you can still feel like you're down. I was told today by a counsellor I was seeing and um, a case manager of mine and she said to me, she said, Jess, you need to stop pretending to be strong. Like, we're always told, be strong, you know, man up, keep your shit together. But the truth is, I haven't gotten the help that I needed because I keep, I function too highly. I function too well. I, I keep my shit together. I don't break down because I've always been told you're not allowed to break down, that it's not okay to cry, that it's not okay to not be okay. And I just find myself the most desperate I've ever been in my life. And I really am trying as hard as I can to keep my shit together. I've been trying for so many years. I guess I just thought it would get to a point where it would be all over. Where I just wouldn't have to struggle anymore, you know? People say to me, don't you want nice things? Don't you want a nice house? Don't you want a nice car? Well, yeah, I do. But in my life, I've learned it's just better to not want anything. Because I just haven't been able to get anything I wanted. And all I want right now is a safe place. I just want... I want a house... I want somewhere to live. I don't want to have to worry about what I'm going to eat or how I'm going to afford to live. <laughs> I keep my shit together because it's what I'm told I have to do. And it's so hard and I try so hard and I get nowhere. I have to move house again. I've moved house like nine times in, in the past 18 months. And, you know, I have to move again. And I understand why I have to move. It's through no fault of my own. And, like, most of the time it isn't anyway. It's, you know, when you're share housing and you're living with other people, you're at the will of everyone else's decisions in life. And they always end up affecting you. And this time I'm so proud of my housemate. Her stepdaughter is going to be living with her and... She suffers really extreme anorexia and she's she's been in hospital and they want to give her a safe place to live when she gets out of hospital. So she's going to go live with my housemate, which, you know, it makes me jealous. It makes me jealous that I wish I had parents that cared that when I got out of hospital that I had a safe place to go. But I didn't. I went into a very unsafe place and then I moved into a house that I thought was safe and it has been really safe, but now I have to move again and I just don't know how many more times I can do it. <laughs> it breaks my heart to be like this. And the thing is, I've been strong right up until this point and I'm letting it out because you need to see how hard it is how difficult it is because how I look right now is how I feel every single day of my life on the inside and I shake uncontrollably and I hold it all in because I have no one to take care of me 
and you know I'm str- I'm trying to find a place to live in a week I will be homeless and I'm reaching out to organizations and I've been told that unless I show them how desperate I really feel on the inside that I'm not actually going to get help. Because there's no help for people that manage to function, who fight extra hard just to fit into society and function and do the things that they have to do, but are breaking apart inside and they keep getting smashed again and again with life.